Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. We're gonna look at some external monitors that work with any laptop, whether you're on a Mac or a PC. Uh, this first one though is gonna be Mac specific and then the rest of them will be cross-platform. The reason that I am have an iPad and a Mac on the table is because there is the ability for me to screen share or utilize a second display from my Mac over to an iPad without any wires. All the rest of these solutions are wired options and so I just wanted to compare these because I've never really sat down and looked at all of these together. So all the links to everything I'm going to talk about are in the description below. I'll talk about some of the things that I like and dislike and just kind of react to them as I go and test these out. So I'm going to unlock my iPad and just go to a main home screen here. I can then easily, because I'm connected to the same network, go over and extend my display very easily to the other, uh, to my iPad essentially. So I can also link my keyboard and mouse to my iPad. Of course, my iPad has a keyboard and mouse attached to it, but if you didn't have that, I could link them and work them together uh, and utilize the keyboard and mouse from my Mac over on the iPad as if it was a secondary device. And so I could actually use my iPad. Let's see what that looks like right now. So I've linked my iPad Pro, my keyboard and mouse to my iPad Pro, and I have my mouse over here and I just brought my mouse over here and now I can actually move everything around. As you can see on the top display, I'm moving around and I can utilize the trackpad here. And if I wanted to, let's say, uh, open up notes and let's just go ahead and create a new note and and so I'm, uh, this is the utility, I think, of being on a single platform here, um, the iPad working really well uh, along with the Mac. And then so that is sharing the keyboard and the mouse. If I wanted to extend my display, I could go and do that as well. There are lots of options there. Uh, right now, I'm just utilizing the keyboard and mouse over here. If I was to drag a window over, it would not go over there. I would have to change my display settings. I can then uh, add my iPad Pro as a display and take over. And so now I am sharing these uh, the display with my laptop and I could drag this over and uh, utilize it as a secondary display. So a little bit more that you could do with an iPad than you can with uh, a regular display, but if you don't have uh, an iPad or you're not on Mac, then some of these other options are gonna be the best option for you. So we're gonna go large to small here. Uh, the first display is from Desk Lab. Now, Desk Lab sent this to me. This is uh, a display that can be ran over USB Type-C or uh, like a micro HDMI and it's nice but it doesn't it didn't come with a stand or anything like that there was nothing in the box uh that would allow me to um stand this thing up and there's no mounts on the back of it and so that is a little bit of a bummer but since i have a top down camera here that's not the end of the world we're just going to go ahead and plug this in over usb c and we'll see how it works and it will be a weird experience because it's laying down on the ground. So one of these Type-C ports will connect it. Um, we'll see which one does. Usually one of them is for power and the other one is for power or display. And so um, looks like it's kind of flickering. Maybe that's the power option. Let's go into the other one and see what we get. And this has been the, yep, there we go. This has been, I don't know, this is not acting very good. I don't know if this Desk Lab one is gonna be an option on a Mac without using the HDMI cable. And really, like if I have to run two cables to this, it's kind of not part of what I'm going to, I'm not gonna utilize it. Now I was excited about this Desk Lab monitor because it seemed like the build quality was better. And I was, I was excited about that because build quality is important to me. This one feels really solid. Everything feels good about this, except the fact that I can't get it to run over just a single USB type C cable. And so I don't know if I would need to power it. See, here's the problem is that I've got to go to the other side of my laptop um, and, uh, and then plug this in so that I have two 
USBs and let's see if we can get it to work now running everything into this uh, and so far it's not um, let's see if my system here even recognizes it and uh, maybe it just needs to be yeah it doesn't even recognize it so I'm not gonna run multiple cables um, unless there's multiple monitors it's just not gonna happen so the next monitor that we're gonna look at is from Lapau and it comes with kind of a, a kickstand type of um, cover, which is nice because it covers the display. It provides a nice kick here so that I can utilize the display at an angle. It has a port on either side. So let's see if the port on either side is going to work when we connect it to the Mac. Now, this particular monitor I have ran before. Um, not on this Mac and see it just powered up perfectly fine and we are extending the display I can just slide it right over and uh, You know it works. I mean this is exactly what I wanted to happen with the desk lab monitor But obviously it didn't work out that way. What's nice about this is having that extended display I don't know if you noticed when I was on the iPad that there was a little bit of lagginess over the Wi-Fi connection between the two devices that's not gonna happen with something like this. This is very, I mean, this the, the um, resolution and the refresh rate's a little bit different on this display than it is on my MacBook Pro. This is obviously gonna be lower, so it's not gonna be as crispy here when I am moving things around here and then drag them over here. It's not gonna be as uh, nice of an experience, but it's still not too bad. So if I go and look at the settings here, and just make sure that my display is properly scaled and then go to the other one and I can scale this one, make sure it's at 1920 by 1080, which it is, then we're good to go. And 60 Hertz is the maximum. And yeah, so I mean, this is working exactly like I would have wanted the last one to work. What I don't necessarily like about this one is the giant bezels all the way around the display. Um, the display does have some settings if I go and uh, and tap the button over here on the side, I can get access to the volume. If I tap the other button, I can toggle through different inputs. And uh, there should be a few other settings as well. But, oh, there we go. There's the rest of the settings. And so we have a lot of user settings we, so we can customize uh, the display and uh, tune it in to best match the MacBook Pro here, which is not going to be possible. So Lapau, decent monitor. You saw how fast it powered up. It comes with a nice... Uh, cover that covers both ends here the back magnetic and the front magnetic as well and then it has its own little kickstand deal which is nice let's move on to the next one which is a monitor similar to the lapau um, smaller bezels um, same type of kickstand deal here and we'll go ahead and plug this one into just one of the ports and see how we go fancy year is the name of this model and boom it is ready to go First off, what I noticed about this display is that the colors seem much better on this display than on the last one we looked at. Let's make sure that we're at 1920 by 1080 uh, for our resolution there. We were not at first. Um, I also have the option to rotate this display if I wanted to make it vertical, which is pretty cool. And then it also has HDR, so I can go high dynamic range on it as well if I wanted to and, uh, and get that HDR. So it supports HDR, which is great. Um, definitely a better option so far. Let's slide a window over. It doesn't feel as, I mean, this the refresh rates are the same. 60 hertz on both of the last, the last monitor and the fancier monitor that we're looking at. But this just feels a little bit better. And the colors look a lot better on the fancier. I mean, they're obviously not as sharp and glossy as what's on the MacBook Pro, but... I mean, this is this is pretty good. Like the other one, it does have a headphone jack. Both of these have headphone jacks. Both of them have uh, micro HDMI ins and two USB-C ports. Here we've got um, some adjustments for, you know, the typical stuff, color, brightness, sharpness, all of that good stuff. And I can go in and make those adjustments. So yeah, not bad on this monitor. The last one is gonna be interesting because it extends out into dual monitors and this is this <laughs> this i'm unsure about because it's it's a lot in getting this thing unpacked and 
figuring out which side is up and then getting it onto your computer. So we're going to stretch this guy out and uh, slide it onto the MacBook Pro here. And I don't know about this, guys. This is kind of weird, but it's going to require two cables, which is a little bit of an annoyance. So we're going to go ahead and plug this one in here. I did test this uh, one of these monitors, not both of them together, but I did test one of these monitors and it is a challenge to figure out. I, I think it's the bottom USB-C port on the monitors that you plug this into. And you cannot go from one USB over to the other monitor. You have to go directly out of your computer, at least on a Mac. I don't know if it would make a difference on a PC or not. So. This is, uh, I don't know about this. So what I'm gonna need to do on most computers is position my displays. Let me see if I can get this. Oh my gosh, this is, this is weird. You just saw that fall over, didn't you? Um, it's a lot of weight for the Mac and most laptops, this is gonna be a lot of weight. So I'm gonna drag uh, this display. This display is the, the one that goes over on the left. And so we'll make sure our displays are positioned correctly. And then we need to make sure that both of them are scaled and set to 1920 by 1080. So we've got that. Now let's go to the other one. Make sure that one is set to 1920 by 1080. And we've got it set. So um, it might be a little hard to see if I drag this over. We've got uh, over on the left a display. We've got over on the right a display. And everything looks pretty good. Of course, the desktop background over here is not correct. I can change that so that it matches. And there are, there are fancy applications that will allow you to create a desktop background that stretches all the way across seamless. But with so much bezel here in the middle, it's gonna be a little bit crazy. Now, the resolution of the display, the colors and everything are not as bad as I thought they were gonna be. They're definitely not the best though. The resolution is HD, standard HD, so lower than the MacBook Pro. Uh, but if you were using this just because you wanted a spread of data all the way across, I think it wouldn't be that bad of a deal. My only concern is that one little bump and everything is gonna tumble over. You really have to have this set up and, and angled so that everything doesn't just fall over. And that might mean raising your MacBook Pro up or your, your laptop up a little higher. So the, you know, cause now I'm like wanting to be down here looking because of the angle of the displays. And so while a triple monitor setup like this is cool and could be useful in some situations and it does break down relatively small. So, you know, all I have to do is unplug this, um, slide it out bring it together, remember which way these suckers fold, and boom, it's ready to, to pack away. That's cool. It's still a little rickety. It's still quite plasticky, and there's nothing to cover this monitor here. Um, you know, I, I forgot to mention that, yes, there are some kickstands, but that's the kickstand, and the kickstand may help a little bit, but I don't know if it's really gonna help uh, in the grand scheme of things when you really tilt the monitor back. Let's, let's just give it the test for the benefit of the doubt. The kickstands come out of the back of just one side here, so let's go ahead and just do one more little test with the kickstand, because I did forget to mention the kickstand. So let's push that little kickstand button out. Let's tilt things back. And, oh, it snapped right back into its little place. Uh, I don't know. All the kickstand does is it makes this one a slide off of the MacBook Pro. Even though I have it snug there, if I push my monitor back, like, I'm just afraid that the whole thing will tumble over. And, I mean, it fell right off of my laptop there. So, I wouldn't trust the kickstand at all, but I guess, you know... You have to make sacrifices if you want triple monitors. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Some of these are kind of, I don't know if they provide much utility. The triple monitor one is a little bit crazy. 
could be useful if you really need all of that extra screen real estate. But in my opinion, I would probably rather go with a couple of these guys because you can use one of them when you need to. It's higher resolution and a bigger overall display. And if you needed two, then you could set two of them up. Um, if you're on a Mac, you could also use your iPad as an external display. If you're on a PC, these are going to be great options as well. Just make sure you have enough USB-C ports to support everything. Some of these displays do have two USB-C ports on them, and I did test plugging an external drive in just to see if it would connect to the computer, and on a Mac it does. On a PC, you may have to test it. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button so you can get more videos from me here on State of Tech.